So next up, we're going to go back in the past by going back to the future using technology to bring one of our earliest uh, supporters and board members and activists to you via the miracle of video. But first, I want to introduce Amy Schollenberger, former director of Rural Vermont, founder of Action Circles, fantastic organizing and lobbying firm here in, in Montpelier. And she's going to tell you a little bit about Dexter and about the story he's going to tell. Hey, Rural Vermont. How y'all doing out there? I can't really see you because the lights are bright. So... I have a couple jobs to do, but first, I just, I just want to, again, let's have a round of applause for the last skit, because that was awesome. I'm really excited about this year's raw milk bill, and I, I hope it gets all the way through, and I'll be helping if I can in the State House. So my first job tonight is to introduce Dexter Randall, who's going to visit us via video here in just a minute. And Dexter, you know, has been there from the very beginning of rural Vermont. Um, I, he's probably been here since, like, the beginning of Vermont, really. <laughs> he's always telling me how he's been on that farm, you know, forever. And uh, he's still involved as a board member emeritus. Um, I think Dexter has served in almost every capacity that a person can serve this organization. You know, he's been a farmer activist. Right from the beginning, he's been a board member, he's been the board chair, he's been the board emeritus guy, he's been a volunteer, you know, he's stuffed envelopes, he's made phone calls. He even got himself elected to the Vermont House of Representatives to carry the message into the State House in a different way, which I think was a really big deal uh, for all of us and probably for him as well. And I was thinking about Dexter and what I wanted to say about him. So I thought I'd say a few things that I learned from Dexter and also some things I knew, but he reminded me and some things he taught me and not just Dexter, but the other farmers that I worked with when I worked at Rural Vermont. In case you can't tell, I'm a flatlander. <laughs> you probably knew that already. Um, and I don't, I don't come from farming background. In fact, uh, there's kind of a long-standing joke that I can't even really grow a house plant. And so I had a lot to learn when I came to work for rural Vermont. So I'm going to mix them up a little bit in what Dexter taught me because one of the things he taught me was that it's really important in this organization that the farmers are the decision makers. Because as you heard from Anthony Polina, the, the issues that rural Vermont works on are the issues that affect farmers in their daily lives. And a lot of times, you know, if you're not a farmer, if you're not doing that work every day, it might never occur to you, for instance, that that sign might be offensive, right? Or that all this stuff is a problem if you haven't walked through the process yourself. So it's really important, and I think rural Vermont is kind of unique in this way that it is a political advocacy organization where the people who are affected the most by the policies are actually the leaders in the organization, and I think it's one of the organization's great strengths. Dexter also reminded me every day that it's important to do the work to build a grassroots movement with many leaders, and I'm really glad to see you all here, and I think it's, it is really important, and, and you're gonna find out specifically why when you hear the story that Dexter is going to tell you. So we're not going to say more about that right now. I did learn a new term, though. I, I think it's an old term, but it's new to me. Just last night, I was doing some research on the internet. And I learned this is called snowflake organizing. Rather than like hub and spoke, it's snowflake. So you have a whole lot of different leaders doing different kinds of things so that no matter what happens, you can keep yourselves together. And I think that's another great strength of rural Vermont. He also, by the way, explained to me the difference between an ox and a steer one day when I was getting teased about not knowing that. And also what a heifer is and how corn gets pollinated. All of these are very important things to know when you're working on farm advocacy. 
Um, also, it's important to have principles that you can go back to and to address the root causes of issues rather than to just work on the symptoms. And I think, again, that is really what rural Vermont has been about from the beginning. You know, if Anthony and his team hadn't fixed current use, we'd still have a hotline to tell you how to get your house reappraised. And that would be a great waste of 30 years, as far as I'm concerned. I think the most important thing that Dexter taught me again and again and again, and all of you helped, and that it's gonna come up in the story, is that the only thing that beats corporate power is people power. And when we work together, we can negotiate any challenge. So let's hear from Dexter. One of the most important issues that rural Vermont uh, historically has ever worked on is we, we've always not been afraid to work on real thorny issues. And uh, the biotech industry, which uh, blessed us with a lot of different issues, has, has given rural Vermont plenty of uh, ammunition to work. And uh, one of the things that uh, came about uh, was, uh, I can't remember what year it was, but uh, the Commissioner of Agriculture, then Leon Graves, sent out a note to farmers and farm groups that there was going to be a meeting at the State House, uh, and they were going to tell us all the good things uh, about what the biotech industry was going to bring to us uh, in uh, genetically modified seed. So I uh, got it, and I notified the our executive director at Rural Vermont about it, and she sent out a memo to uh, Rural Vermont uh, people all over the state, and they rallied together at the State House, Room 11. We jam-packed that room full, and we basically had a good time. And uh, I had never seen a room so packed full of uh, incensed people, and in fact, I think that the uh, people, the commission and so on, were shocked to see the people that were there. And it became evident that uh, something was going to have to happen. And it was shortly after that that we started talking about uh, doing something to protect uh, organic farmers against the possibility of genetic drift from uh, genetically modified seed drifting into a farmer's field that was an organic farm. And he had the possibility of uh, crop loss damages. And along that whole line right there, as time passed on, I lived in uh, Troy, and I had a neighbor up there that uh, somehow got a hold of some seed somewhere, planted it unknowingly, and it was GMO seed, and it was uh, neighboring right on in the same valley into an organic farm, it was Jack Laser, that uh, was growing uh, crops of grain to be able to sell. So. This culminated in us getting together, and that was one of the things that uh, we started out uh, and got the uh, Farmer Protection Act started in the uh, legislature to uh, protect farmers against genetic drift. That was probably the hottest topic that uh, rural Vermont ever organized or worked around throughout its whole history, and uh, trying to help small family farms be able to have a crop of their own and to be able to market it as a pure product. Have a drink. We uh, worked on a number of different issues, of course, and but this uh, Farmer Protection Act I can't remember the exact history of how it all worked, but I was in the legislature and I was uh, the original uh, sponsor of the bill. We worked it through the legislature and I believe that it came back, in the end, that it came back from the Senate back to the House and over a course of the summer, I can't remember the particulars of it, but we did a lot of uh, organizing around 
that whole issue, rural Vermont did. It seemed like months of it. And just as we were coming up to it, going to go back into the legislature, and the legislature was starting in early January, and I was to report that bill on the House floor, and the day before the legislature was to start up again, that evening, I suffered a minor heart attack, ended up in uh, Newport in the hospital, and eventually went to Dartmouth-Hitchcock Hospital, and uh, the executive director, Amy Schollenberger, tried to pick up the pieces. I, I had uh, the information to report the bill on the House floor at my farm, and Amy had to put pieces together, and then Representative Joey Klein reported the bill on the House floor the next day while I was in Dartmouth-Hitchcock having angioplasty surgery. And uh, that shows the strength of the rural Vermont to be able to overcome any hurdle that seemed to come its way. And so there was uh, one piece of history that uh, the, the strength that, that rural Vermont has always shown and to overcome any obstacle that seemed to come along. So just one quick cor correction, um, Dexter was thinking about the farmer, Joey Klein, and he meant the representative, Tony Klein, who reported the bill for Dexter. And just to add a little bit of flavor to the story, so I think this was 2007, if I recall correctly, so I had just gotten a cell phone. That's, you know, it's hard to imagine that. It was one of those old Motorola flippy phones, and it didn't actually work in my house in Johnson. Probably still doesn't work in Johnson. Um, so I had the phone like number forward to my home phone. So I got a call at like three in the morning. This was the night before Dexter was supposed to tell, to report this bill. And he, and the call was not from him. <laughs> it was from like some neighbor who saw the ambulance driving away and knew Dexter was supposed to do this found my phone number, called me up. And so we had to put this whole thing in motion because Dexter had handwritten his notes and they were on his kitchen table at his farm in Troy, which is really far from the state house, really far. And nobody else was prepared to do this, of course, so I forget exactly how it all worked, but I called somebody who called somebody who found somebody who, then we had to like figure out, cause somebody locked the door when they left, which was really weird. Like the ambulance guy locked it, but then we had to find the hidden key, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, Bones Pion, who's the guy who planted the GMO corn by mistake, got the notes, drove like mad to Montpelier, literally got there five minutes before, handed the papers to Tony Klein, who just read them out loud on the floor. <laughs> and, um, and we passed that bill, by the way. <laughs> Unfortunately, our great Governor Douglas vetoed it a little while later. But what I wanna really say is to this day, we are the only state that has passed a GMO liability bill through a legislature. And what I really want to say is that you did that. You and your thousands of friends made that happen despite everything that Monsanto and the biotech industry could throw at us because they threw a lot at this state. They spent a lot of money. At, I remember we had this whole strategy around the lobbyists. Some of you were part of that. The, I mean, there was a moment where there were like 15 corporate biotech lobbyists lobbying against that bill. And that bill passed in Vermont in both chambers and went to the governor's desk. And no one else has done that except rural Vermont. And even though Governor Douglas vetoed the bill. 
That work set the stage for all that has followed because first of all, we built a movement in the state of people who knew that if they work together, change can happen. And the legislators learned that y'all aren't going away until you get what you want. And so it's a little bit easier, I think, now than it was then. No, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying it's like this much easier, right? Because change is slow and you have to keep working at it. And one big strategy of people who don't want you to get what you want is to make it go really slow so you give up, right? And the great thing about rural Vermont is when 10 or 15 of you get tired or one of you has a heart attack the night before you're supposed to report a bill, there's always somebody else who's willing to step up and take up the mantle and do the work that needs to be done because you all have learned to work together and to support each other and to stand in solidarity. And there are not many organizations in this state or in this country who know how to do that better than rural Vermont does. So Anthony said in his talk that every day we have choices before us. Legislators have choices, we have choices, and I would really encourage you to choose every day to stick together and keep working because if you do, nothing can stop you and you will get what you want.